In this video, we're going to be doing some water drop refraction photography. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be doing some water drop refraction photography. Now, I first came across this technique when I followed the work of Don Komarechka. He's a fantastic macro photographer. I highly recommend you follow him if you are into macro photography. And while we're on the subject of Don, he's just started a Kickstarter campaign to get his second book finished. It's a book all about macro photography. I'm going to leave a link in the description below, but highly recommend you go look at it if you are into macro photography. Since recording this video, Don has reached the initial 30,000 Canadian dollar goal for this book. Now we're looking at smashing the stretch goals. The first stretch goal of 45,000 Canadian dollars is to add videos to each section of the book. And then the next goal after that is to hit $60,000 so that it can create the book out of better materials. This will benefit all backers because you will be getting a better final product. I've backed the campaign and ordered my copy. I highly recommend you do the same if you are into macro photography. So you might have to excuse some of the background noise. We have builders working right outside my back garden. They're building bungalows. So you might have to excuse me over the next few months if there is some noise in the background. So in this video, we're going to be working on water drop refraction photography. This entails when you have a water drop in your scene and the background refracts into the water drop, comes into focus, and you focus on the actual background in the water drop, okay? That's what we're going to attempt today. So I have a few things on my desk. These are Jabria daisies, got them from my local florist. I have my backgrounds, I've got my specimen holder with my memo clips, a syringe with water in it, and we have a few little odds and bits which are like grass, a bit of flowers. Now let's get those out of the way first. And what I need to do first is I need to bring my camera in so you can see what's going on. Right, so first of all, what I need to do is get my bingo clips. And in one of Dom's images, what I really like, he has like a, a grass that's going, it's arcing over like this, and then he's got some drops on it. So we're gonna do something similar to that, just to keep things simple. And if you are following along, I would recommend that you do experiment with this. Once the video's over, don't just finish there, go out and experiment. Obviously, I don't want to have um, a two hour video of this because you'll just get bored and click off. So I've just put the grass into my memo clip holders here. I'm going to go into live view. So I'm just going to mess around with my camera. And I'm just going to keep messing with it until I get it exactly where I want it. Okay, so I've got something I like there. So I have my remote shutters, okay? And I'm going to take a test shot of that because I need to work out what f-stop we need to succeed with the depth of fill that we need to get that blade of grass in focus. So we're going to go with, let's go with f11, ISO 100. And we are looking at around um, two seconds, okay, at the moment. Again, I'm going to wait for the vibration to calm down while we're in live view, and then I'll just press my button to take a test shot. Okay, I'll be ready. Okay, let's examine that image. And yeah, we need to focus forward a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my focus in the middle of the blade of grass. Again, we don't have to be perfect because we are going to readjust our focus when the drops are on there. I'm just trying to get a sense of what f-stop we need to get it all in focus. I'm going to have to go up to f16. So we have three, four second on the shutter speed. Take another test shot. Okay, that's looking okay. Now, four seconds, I'm risking camera shake being on the second floor of my house. So if you're doing this and you're following along, find a very stable surface to do this on. So you don't get any camera shake. I'm getting camera shake through the floorboards, but I'll just have to make do because I can't go downstairs and film this episode, okay? 
So now we've done that, what I want to do is introduce some water drops into this blade of grass. I'm going to do three, one in the middle and then one either side. I'm going to pre-wet it with my sprayer. This will help me see where I want to put my drops and they'll also help for the water drops to grip just a little bit better. Okay, let's have a look at that. Put my hand behind. You can see there my hand in the background. Very nice. And I want this drop in the foreground to be a little bit bigger. And if it does just drop off like that, just don't sweat it. Just carry on, okay? Keep reintroducing them. So I have some toilet paper here that if you get some drops in the places you don't want, you can soak them up and then carry on doing it. And what I mainly need to do is I want about three of them in a row so that looks nice and artistic rather than just being a random drops of water. So next what I want to do is introduce our flower in the background. So we're going to go with the red daisy and the centre of the flower I want in the middle of the frame. Yeah, that looks great. I'm going to focus on the middle drop but you're going to focus inside the water drop. Let's see what we want to do. I want to get a bit more of the petals in, so I'm going to move it back a little bit. All right. Let's take a test shot of that and see what we got. Okay, that's coming out at 10 seconds. I'll try. I'm not going to guarantee this is going to work, but on yours, if you're on a solid ground, it will work. Okay, surprisingly, that worked quite well. And I just want to reposition this flower. I want the middle of the flower to be right in the middle of the frame. And now, if you notice, around the water drop, we have some of the scenery that's around. So what I'm going to do is grab my backgrounds. I'm going to have a play with some of the backgrounds here. Put him on a clip. Bring him in. In fact, you know what? I wonder if we could just stand them up behind the tripod like that. And one final one needs to go. Right behind it. And underneath it. Go. So what's that done? It's just added a little bit of texture in the background. Yeah, these away. And again, let's take a test shot of that. So I'm just going to grab another background. Okay, here we go. That's it. It's my video light. It's the video light that's causing that reflection. You won't have that problem because you won't be recording a video at the same time. So all of this that I'm doing to block out the background, you won't need to do. But unfortunately, I've got to do it because of the video lights. Now, I will be turning them off in a minute. But I want to show you the process. There we go. Beautiful refraction photography. Now one other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a torch and I'm going to turn him on and I'm going to point him towards my flower. You can see there how much of a difference that's making. Grab a towel and put that on there. Okay. Now because of that, I can turn, I can bring down my shutter speed to around four seconds. Again, I'm going to cover up this light. And I don't like how in focus the flare is. So I'm going to drop my f-stop down. Try f e f10. Let's try f10. Okay, we'll take another shot. That's a little bit better. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a play with my f-stops, my shutter speeds, I'm going to play with the backgrounds and I'm also going to turn off all of the video lights because they are affecting the image. Again, if you're doing this at home, you won't need to worry about that because you won't be videoing yourself. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to show you the results on the screen now. So you can see there how not having the video lights helps out a lot. So bear that in mind when you're doing it because you want to cut out anything in the area that's going to reflect in your water drop. To give water drop refraction photography a go, I would love to see your results in the Macro World Facebook group. That's how you can do water drop refraction photography. I'm going to be exploring this a lot more in the future, so I expect some more to come. Again, don't forget to check out Dom's new Kickstarter campaign for the book Macro Photography, The Unseen Universe in the description below. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video. My name is Stuart Wood, and again, I'll see you on the next video. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. I think I'd get that right by now, don't you? Um, Don Camarecha. Don Cam Camaret Camar So in this video, we are going to be doing a Mac. Fuck it out. We are doing macro photography, yeah. <laughs> and you put something behind it and it reflect, it refracts, sorry. It reflects, it refracts. So this is, can you hear that? I have some of uh, these flowers. These are, what are these? And one of Don's uh, really good images is there's a, like a, um... damn. Look at that robust, isn't it?